Richland High School. Thank you for viewing Ram TV. Today is Friday, March 28, 2014. Here's what's happening today in Ram Nation. Friday, March 28, 1 p.m., Tennis Boys Varsity at West Mountain Hilltop. 4.30 p.m., Baseball Boys Varsity vs. Bishop Guilfoyle. Student dismissal times are as follows. 11.45, Boys Tennis to West Mountain. 2.45, Varsity Baseball to Highland Park. For more information about the Max Dieto Memorial Foundation, please check Power School. Sports Power International Team vs. Cambria County All-Stars Basketball Game. Sports Power International presents the Sports Power International Team vs. the Cambria County All-Stars Basketball Game. The game will be played on Friday, April 4, 2014 at 6 p.m. at the Cambria County War Memorial. Applied Business Concept Class Survey. The Applied Business Concept Class needs your help. We are going to create a Richland product to sell to the students here at Richland. We need your feedback. Please go to the Richland website and complete the survey for us. Talent Show Informational Meeting. A mandatory informational <laughs> meeting will be held on Wednesday, April 2nd at 7, 10 a.m. in Mr. Dorch's room, B112. If you fail to attend this meeting, you will not be permitted to perform in the talent show. No exceptions. Cambria County Camp Cadet. Students in grades 7 through 9 interested in law enforcement are invited to Camp Cadet this summer. It's an event-filled week, July 27th through August 2nd at Mount Aloysius College. Applications are available at www.cambriacounty. Com. Uni com. University of Pittsburgh College Prep and Leadership Academy. The University of Pittsburgh is offering a week-long summer program for high school students July 13th to the 8th, July 18th. This academy will have you living in college residence halls, explore the campus, learn the ins and outs of college, application process, <laughs> and help to prepare <laughs> for the SAT. Application deadline is May 15th and application materials are available at www thebridge.pit.edu. Mount Aloysius College Fair. Mount Aloysius College will be holding their first college fair on Monday, March 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. in the Athletic Convocation <laughs> and Wellness Center. There will be colleges at the fair from the state of Pennsylvania as well as surrounding states. This is a great event for sophomores, juniors, so as well as last minute seniors. For more information about the 2014 Youth Philanthropy <laughs> Internship, please check Power School. Here's a special. Here's a special, here's a, here's a special message from, from Richland Sad on the dangers of drowsy driving. Back at 7:44 this morning on today investigates a serious hazard facing young drivers that is often overlooked. NBC's senior investigative correspondent Lisa Myers is in Bethesda, Maryland, with details. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Meredith. We're talking about driving while tired. We've all done it, but experts say it's particularly dangerous for teens. Fatigue is a factor in at least 100,000 crashes every year, and most of those involve young drivers who get behind the wheel when they're drowsy and never make it home. I sit and I replay that night over and over and over again, and I thought, I'm just so close to home. I can make it. That night, Rusty Burris was 18 years old with a bright future. But driving home from his girlfriend's house, his life changed forever. I knew I was tired, but I didn't really feel that I was that tired. And driving home, I got just a mile from home and fell asleep at the wheel. In seconds, Rusty's car drifted off this country road and rolled over. The impact crushed his roof and his spine. Rusty would never walk again. I've fallen asleep and crashed my car one time, and that's all it took. Experts say every day, millions of teens are dangerously tired when they get behind the wheel. More than a third of teens say they drive drowsy on a regular basis, and more than half of all fatigue-related crashes involve drivers under 25. It's a huge problem, and it's probably bigger now than it was in the past. Tom Balkin is president of the National Sleep Foundation. He says adolescents go through changes in their circadian rhythms that make it nearly impossible for them to fall asleep before 11 p.m. Combine that with early morning classes, after-school jobs, and late-night socializing, and it's easy to see why teens are chronically sleep-deprived. The average college student needs about eight and a half to nine and a half hours of sleep. Virtually none of them get that. In fact, they average six hours of sleep per night. So how can fatigue affect their driving? 
today's show, how may I help you? To find out, we set up an unscientific experiment with three Today Show interns, Patrick, Meredith, and Brian, all college students who habitually drive after not much sleep. Last summer, I was driving tired almost every day. When it's final season, there's no sleep. That's when the drowsy driving starts to kick in. For our experiment, we kept our kids up for an entire night. No naps or caffeine. Experts told us that would simulate the level of fatigue students typically suffer after a week of insufficient sleep. You don't want to hit a cone. Then we brought them here to the Skip Barber Driving School in Connecticut where with safety instructors by their side, we put them through two road tests, a tight twisty loop and an emergency lane change. We're testing today their ability to instantaneously react to an unexpected situation. Hitting any cones would be the equivalent of a crash in the real world. The day before, all three had driven these courses wide awake and aced them. I haven't hit any cones and I, I think it's not that hard. I feel pretty confident. Once you got the hang of it, it, was, uh, it wasn't that bad. But watch the difference when they're drowsy. Our kids swerve wildly through turns, hitting cone after cone after cone. If that had been a real world situation, he would have had a pretty violent crash. Inside the car, you'd never know it. Even as they crash, our drowsy students remain slack jawed and dazed. Patrick clearly is giddy. He, he almost seems drunk. In many ways, driving drowsy is very much like dry, driving drunk. We showed the video to Tom Balkan, our sleep expert. He says drowsiness, like alcohol, can severely impair a driver's reflexes, judgment, and awareness. Should parents be as worried about kids driving when they're too tired as they are about them texting while driving or driving drunk? Absolutely. Especially, he says, on long, boring roads like the one where Rusty crashed. So we also tested our kids on this monotonous two-mile track, each driving it for half an hour. At first, I thought I did okay. You know, I thought I was in control. But their dead stares tell a different story. Balkan says these are signs of a dangerous condition called microsleeps, where your eyes stay open, but your brain is falling asleep. And this is the kind of situation where uh, anything uh, unexpected actually could throw them. Like these surprise cones. We put them up on our kid's final lap to simulate a stopped car or a person unexpectedly in their path. Before the test, we made sure an alert driver could easily stop in time. But watch our drowsy kids. Whoa! They're so disoriented, they barely hit the brakes. Whoa, okay. That was fun. <laughs> I just killed somebody, didn't I? Imagine if that cone had been someone's pet or child. After I sat there for a minute and realized what I did, that's a tough pill to swallow. That was an eye-opener because that thing that you never know is going to happen that will just come out of nowhere. That's what you have to be prepared for. And if you're tired, you might not be. A realization that came too late for Rusty Burris. When you're tired, stop. Don't push it. Because even though you've only got a mile left, you could be throwing your entire life away trying to drive one more mile. Now, sleep e experts say parents should treat drowsy driving just like drunk driving. Tell your kid if he's tired to call you. You'll come pick him up. Or if he gets tired on a long drive, tell him to pull off the road, get some caffeine, and take a 20-minute nap. That should help revive him. Meredith. All right, Lisa Myers, thank you very much. <laughs> Career announcement. Students, let's continue our discussion about the lumber, wood, and paper cluster. Sawing machine operators operate wood sawing machines, and they make about $19,940 per year to start. Eventually, they can average about $28,910 in PA. Forest and conservation workers perform manual labor to develop, maintain, or protect forests, forested areas, and woodlands. There are about 24 openings per year in PA, and the average PA wage is $41,860, while the U.S. average pay in this career is only approximately $37,460. So enjoy working outdoors here in PA and make more money doing it. Have, Have a wonderful, wonderful day! day.
Tickets are on sale in the guidance office from April 1st to the 24th. $40 each. The two dinner choices are chicken parmesan or top round of beef. <laughs>